So there's this little trick that I like to use when creating fills, just using the chord tones. So right before we get into it, for those of you who are new, I'm Derek Bennett from Bass Nation Academy. If you're looking to enhance your bass playing skills or take it to that next level, you wanna visit the Bass Nation Academy. I'll put the link down in the description. We have tons of resources, lessons, courses, live stream classes, uh, webinars, all of that kind of stuff. So right after you finish watching this lesson, go check that out. So let's jump right into it. First of all, I'm gonna be using some terms. If you're not familiar with them, please refresh yourself. I'm gonna go over them quickly and you can check out the lessons here on YouTube or in the Academy about these specific terms. I'm gonna be using a term dominant or dominant scale, mixolydian or mixolydian scale, which is the same thing, or triad, which is three notes inside of the chord. So those are the main terms I'm gonna be using. Familiarize yourself with them and let's jump right into it. So say if you're playing in the key of C, which I was doing before, and I'm using the mixolydian scale, which is a major scale with a flat seven. So you can use the chord, I'm using the chord tones as well. The one, the three, and the seven. And I can hold that out and you can hear how it sounds together. That's how that chord would sound played all together. So I was playing a chord or playing a groove on top of a C7 chord. So C7 meaning C dominant chord. Okay, you'll get that. I'll put it up on the screen so you can see it clearly. So next step, what I like to do is strip down the chord tones of that scale. So meaning I'm gonna take the first note, the third note, the fifth note, and the seventh note. These are the notes that we're going to be basing our fill or our riff off of. So the C, the E, the G, or the B flat. So if you guys remember in the beginning towards the end of that groove, I played a lick. So one little trick before you actually get into the lick is playing a half step before each chord tone. So with the C, you play a half step before that, which will be B. The next one is E, so you have to play a half step before that one, E flat. The next one is going to be G, so you play a half step before that, which is G flat or F sharp. The next one is gonna be B flat, so you play a half step before that, A. So together it sounds pretty cool already. Sounds pretty cool, right? So next, all we're gonna do is add one more note in the front of those half steps. So this is what I mean. Let's take another tone of the scale before that and then play the half steps. Here we go. So if we're playing C, our note is based around C. We play one chord tone or one scale tone before that, which is D, and then we're gonna play that half step movement. Get it? Right? Pretty simple. Now for the next one, if we can figure that out, we're gonna play one scale tone before that. So F, E flat, E. Got it? So, so far we have D, B, C, F, E flat, E. All right, so for the next one, what's our next chord tone? G, which is our fifth note of the scale, which of C mixolydian or C dominant scale. So we have the G, so what do we do for that one? We did F sharp, G, or G flat, G. So now we have to find a scale tone that comes before that half step movement. So if we have F sharp, G, we have to play, what's our next one? It's not A, it's not a flat, it's not A flat, it's not in there. All right, so A, we can use. There we go, so A, F sharp, G, get it? So, so far we have D, B, C, F, E flat, E, A, F sharp, G. Now for the last one, it's pretty simple. Now that we got the concept of this, the last one was A, B flat, remember? A, B flat, our half step movement was A, B flat. So now all we have to do is find a scale tone before that one, so B flat, so our mixolydian scale, we're playing the C, which is our root note, and then we're playing that half step movement. So now we have C, A, B flat. So all together, that's, that's all the chord tones that we're gonna use. So we have the one, the three, five, and then the seven. Or better yet, C, E, G, 
B flat. Okay, simple enough, right? So this is exactly how I created the line. So you can even switch the order of this movement. You can play that chromatic note first, you can play the scale tone next, you can, you know, you can move around and actually circle the note that you want to play or that chord tone. That you can do it that way, you can start with that lowest note first, you can skip around. I usually don't use the first one or the C or the scale tone one, uh, just because it really doesn't sound that great when you land on that. It really sounds <laughs> more of a nursery rhyme when you... It's just weird to me. It just, just sounds weird, but it, it still works, but that's just my personal preference. So you can play with it as you wish. Um, that's just a way that I created, you know, even before I even understood what I was doing, I was playing with the chord tones and actually utilizing the chord tones inside of that C7 chord. C7 meaning flat seven, dominant seven chord. All right, we got that. Just remember that if you haven't heard that yet. So you can do this in any key. Just play with it. Do that same formation. You can, as an exercise, you can do the first one, the third one, combinations too guys if you see that I'm using uh, different combinations when I'm doing this just to switch it up and make it sound a little bit different uh, you can play that the the higher note first with the way we did it first but always end on that chord tone you understand what I'm saying so when you end on the chord tone the C the, the D the, the G B flat or the um, C the other way so playing it one three two or whatever fingering you're you're playing at the time so one four one or one four two sorry so you guys get the idea it's more so of just a concept that you can play around with with any scale or any chord uh, when you're trying to create bass lines or fills uh, things like that so just you know utilizing the chord tones and making sure you know what's going on inside the song musically and theoretically so you can sound like you know what you're doing <laughs> and actually know what you're doing at the same time. But anyway, if you guys haven't subscribed, hit that red subscribe button. Those of you who are new, hopefully you got this. Hopefully you got something out of this and I uh, hope to see you again every single week here, every single Saturday uh, around 12, 30. I try to keep it consistent. Uh, we upload here to YouTube. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, chat it up in the comment section. Love to hear from you guys. Also check the, out the Base Nation Academy if you haven't already, and I'll meet you there when you get there. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.